All right, welcome to our last video in the database series. This is video four and database some final bits. This actually is one of my more favorite topics in databases. I'm really not very passionate about database topics in general. Um, it's just not my thing. And you're gonna find in the computer world, different techno geeks, different geeks out there, computer people have different passions. For example, I shared you with my passion on information security and I shared my passion on digital media. Databases really, you know, I, I have to deal with them, but I really never look at a database and appreciate the beauty of a database. Um, but that's not wrong. If you are one of these people who love databases, then good. I'm glad that you do. Databases, however, just don't do it for me. Now, this topic particularly kind of does because we are tying it in with data mining and some security issues. So, you know, I'm like, ooh, this is kind of cool. So let's begin the end video by talking about data warehouses. These are very large databases that hold data from various sources. For example, if you look at Amazon, Amazon is just not one computer with one hard drive. It's got to manage information coming from around the world, coming into these massive areas, um, coordinating all this information together. So data warehouse, very large databases that hold data from various sources. They merge the data from these different sources into one large database, hopefully seamlessly. Data mining. There is a great quote from Richard Stallman. Richard Stallman is a very famous uh, geek in the geek world, in the IT world. Look him up on Wikipedia. He was responsible for GNU, which is an interesting acronym, which stands for GNU, G-N-U, stands for GNU is not Unix. Um, interesting person. Uh, very much a privacy right activist in the world of computers. And he had a really good quote, which says, Facebook is not your friend. It is a surveillance engine. As I am recording this video, a news article came out last week that was about data, that was about Facebook doing a social experiment by manipulating people's emotions by adjusting things that showed up in your feed. Another news article that just broke actually yesterday or the day before was about British um, intelligence community, the, the British intelligence community, also manipulating Facebook and social media. So keep this in mind when you're using social media, when you're using Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. Although I really haven't heard anything negative about Twitter. It's been mostly Facebook. So data mining, what is this thing we're talking about here? It is the process of going through data to get information that is meaningful. Now, data mining on its own is not a bad thing. In fact, all of it is data mine. You're going through information to get something you need, something that you want. Now, you might be saying, well, I don't data mine. Yes, you do. Okay. For example, if you watch television, if you have, let's say, a dish or cable network, when you look at the channel guide, you're data mining. You're looking for shows, right, that you want to watch. You're looking for show names. You're looking for times. You might be looking at the episode guide. You know what this episode's about. You're data mining. You're getting, you're going through different data to find something that's meaningful to you. Now, the problem with this is when people data mine for nefarious purposes, when people data mine for things that they are not really should be data mining for. Uh, for example, uh, with what we've discovered about the NSA after Snowden disclosed all that information, we learned that the NSA was data mining everybody in the United States. That's not very ethical. That's not very good. Um, but then we also find that DHS, Department of Health, uh, excuse me, DHS, uh, Department of Homeland Security, is also data mining our feeds. For example, the CDC and DHS have been data mining Twitter and Facebook. But they've been doing it to look for epidemic breakout. So for example, let's say, again, I live in here in Humble, and people in Humble start posting, I'm sick, I don't feel good, et cetera, et cetera. They're looking at that information to try to predict disease patterns or an outbreak or something like that. So I would say that would be a good purpose of data mining, while listening to everybody's phone conversations and looking at all their emails would be bad data mining. So data mining, again, is defined as just going through data to find stuff that's meaningful, stuff that we're looking for, uh, discovering patterns in large data sets. And again, it's not necessarily bad. It's what you're doing with it. And more importantly, whether or not you're letting people know that you're doing it. Google data minds you. As I've told you in the past, Google is not a search company. Google is not a video company. Google is an advertising company. They've made no qualms about telling people that they advertise. 
And so Google data mines you, and they're very upfront about it. Now, what they do with some of the information is questionable, but they let you know up front, hey, look, we're mining your data. Big data is another term that's actually coming out right now. It's a big, big term. It's, in fact, I wrote a, a graduate paper on big data. What we're seeing now is massive amounts of raw data. Massive, huge amounts of data collected by businesses and governments every second of every day. I mean, this thing is huge. We're talking on the scale of petabytes or more. And to give you some comparison so you understand what a petabyte is, the U.S. Library of Congress has the equivalent of 235 terabytes of data. I'm going to repeat that. The U.S. Library of Congress, right, massive repository of books and papers and documents, has the equivalent of 235 terabytes of data by April 2011. Times that by four, that's a single petabyte. So take the Library of Congress and build four of them. Department of Homeland Security, DHS, receives over a terabyte of data every day. That's a lot of information. National Counterterrorism Centers gets 8,000 to 10,000 pieces of counterism terrorism daily. This is all open source information, by the way. Google processes 20 petabytes of data a day. Okay, think about all the searches that go through Google. And now you don't have to go to Google to search through Google. In fact, Google and I, Bing, I've talked about search engines before, are the two primary search engines out there right now. So if you're using Yahoo or other search engines, they're feeding back into either Google or Bing. Google processes 20 petabytes of data every single day. This is equivalent to every book, every page, and every word from the U.S. Library of Congress going through Google's data servers over five times daily. So when we're taking a look at big data, we're looking at massive amounts of data. And again, this is a new emerging trend. This is a new emerging idea. This is a new emerging technology because we're accumulating so much information that a lot of it just sounds like background noise. But patterns start to emerge. And so big data is looking at all of this massive amounts of information and trying to make sense out of it. Weather services are using big data. They're going through big data because they're getting so much information about weather patterns and climate and all this stuff that they're trying to make sense of what might seem trivial information making sense. I talked a little second ago about the CDC and DHS looking at people's postings as far as, you know, I, I don't feel good, I feel sick, I'm homesick or whatever. Going through information and seeing if they can predict outbreaks or track diseases and that kind of stuff. So big data, it's here with us, it's not going away. The question is what we're going to do with it. So there's a lot of ethical concerns when it comes to big data. Okay, that's going to conclude our talk about databases, except for this little part right here, which is if you want to know more. And just like in every video we, or every series, we always talk about additional information that is available if you need to know it or if you want to know it. The first one is SQL tutorials. Let's say you need to know more about SQL. There is a great website that has a lot of free tutorials in different things, internet, different programming languages, and that is w3schools.com. In this case, you want to go through w3schools.com slash SQL. It's a free SQL tutorial. Let's say you want to know more about databases and SQL. Here's a really good link to a video on YouTube. Uh, another good link on YouTube that I found about what is a database. You can check that out. And you also have my SQL database for beginners. This is through Udemy. And if I remember correctly, this is a free lesson that you can look at, again, if you need to know more about databases. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you have not clicked subscribe, please do so as well as click that like button. It really helps again our ratings and our searchability on Google. Talk about big data. It helps us stand out from the crowd. Our next series is going to be our last lesson in the intro series and it's going to be about e-commerce. So be sure to tune in for that. Until next time, have fun setting out there. Goodbye for now.